going to follow joy. <laughs> Praise God. Wow. I don't think you can, <laughs> Thanks for that, Sean. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> you, know, you know, it's awesome to see uh, the next generation coming up. I remember, when, I remember when joy was sort of this high and uh, they used to do little dances at the front of church and... And then they went through Kingdom Kids, which is now Champions. And then you see them go through Youth and Torch. And, and then they came through the process yeah. of growth. Yeah. And then when you see that now, yeah. awesome. Praise Fantastic. God. What an awesome guy. <laughs> wow. I was just, as Joy was just speaking, you know, the Lord just uh, implanted something on my heart. You know, the authority we have and the use of that authority is going to come out of relationship. You know, I was listening to, and people, probably some people don't like Benny Hinn or on the stuff that the razzmatazz of it, but he's a man of God. And, uh, and I was listening to him being interviewed the other night and uh, it just really blessed me uh, because all of us, I dare say at one time, we say, I'd really like to be able to do this. And I want to see the lame walk and the blind see and I want to see all these things and I want God to use me like that and uh, one of the questions to him was uh, how do you get that intimacy with the Holy Spirit and he says spend time with him and talk to him and he says there's no other answer than that and he was sharing that when he was a young lad they went on a missions trip and he was only a young man and he'd been under the ministry of Catherine Coomer. And he was in his bedroom and he was just spending time with the Lord. And the lady's house they were staying at shouted up, Benny, your dinner is on the table and it's ready now. And he says he stood up to go and he felt a hand on his arm and a voice say, in just five minutes more, we've not finished. And that really... He just did something to me and I thought, wow. You know, the Lord is waiting for us to spend time with him. What an awesome God. What an awesome God. And are we prepared to pay the price to have that intimacy with the Lord? Awesome, isn't it? What a wonderful fall. Praise God. Jesus is our victory. What an awesome God. In 1 Corinthians it says, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. You know, I really thought when I was reading this, you know, I thought, wow, Jean knew what I was ministering this morning. <laughs> you know, praise God. Bless her. And this mortal shall put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and Pastor Will was just sharing there. He's nicked some of the message, really, but praise God. It's the same spirit. But you know, Jesus became the spotless lamb. He was the lamb that took away the sins of the world. You know, the word says that we came into this world speaking lies. Under the curse. Sin. As babies, you think, well, a baby can't lie. But it's born into this earth in sin. Yep. And, you know, because of Jesus Christ, because, you know, Jesus walked on earth. You know, it says he came without sex. There was no coincidence with that. He came pure in a virgin birth, and there was a reason for that. And he came there, and he walked on earth. I'm not going to go into that. That's another message. But he came, and he walked on earth, and he did the things that his father said. And it's like Joy was saying there, he had authority, but he only did the things that his father told him. Yeah. He wasn't haphazard, he didn't fly all over the place just doing anything he wanted because there was a maturity in Christ. And so he was under authority of the father. And obviously we see many things in the Bible, that the healings he did, and when the, uh, the centurion soldier came up to him and said, I know you're a man under authority, and I know you've got authority to heal my servant. That was God. And Jesus walked on earth with the ultimate goal was he knew that he was going to the cross. He knew that he was going to the cross and he was going to die for our sins. And you know that time, wow, that's loud. 
That time when uh, he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. It was only, he wasn't getting at Peter, really. Peter didn't really realize what he was saying when he was saying to Jesus, no, th- you know, you're not going to go this way. He was coming against that that was coming against the cross because he knew that he was going to the cross. He knew that he'd got to go to the cross. And when he was in the garden, he said, not my will, but thine be done. Yeah. He knew that he was going to pay the ultimate price for me and you. And when Jesus hung on that cross and the Romans thought they defeated him, when they thought that it was finished, that they'd got him out of the way, they didn't realize that Sunday was coming. That the stone was going to be rolled away and Jesus had conquered death and he'd won and paid our price that we can walk in that same freedom and victory as Jesus walked in, in the fact that our sins are forgiven. If you believe and you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and you ask him to come into your life, that you have that same life, the same victory in Christ, that same victory over death. You know, at the moment, you can, you know, you can see the things that are going on in the Middle East. We can see all our brothers and sisters being martyred for the sake of of the cross for the sake of Christ and you know and it's no different than it was then look at Stephen stoned to death because of Christ but you know he had a glimpse of heaven and for Stephen it was just one step from here into eternity into what really real life is it was beyond that and you know you're reading some of these testimonies from relatives about the people that have died their relationship with God how there was no way they were ever going to bow the knee to anything else but Christ. And now they were prepared to become martyrs. Why? Because they'd got a glimpse of the reality of that victory that Christ had won for them. And they knew that this glimpse on earth was nothing compared to eternity. That when Jesus said, if you lose your life for my name's sake, you shall gain it, that had become a reality in their life. Praise God. And, you know, and little Jean, you know, I'll miss her saying to me on a Sunday, you know, Come on, where's my hog? You know, you know, but she knew. And she had that reality of that victory she had in Christ. Yes, and that she's passed over and she's won and she's finished the race yes. and she's run it well. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because she had a reality of that victory in Christ. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Awesome. And the Lord wants us to have that reality of that victory we have in Christ. Because, unfortunately, many times in the church... You have people come to you and, I'm really struggling in this area. I'm really struggling to get victory in this area. You know, I'm struggling with this or I'm struggling with that. And the fact is, is I believe one of the main things uh, for us to get victory in our lives is the fact that we come under authority of Christ. And that we allow Christ to have authority over our lives. You know, because most of the time, sometimes you, people get born again but they still want to live part of their old life. But you know, to have complete victory on this earth here now, the word says we're completely, our old man is dead. Our old life, our old self is dead. You know, when we get baptised, it's just an outward showing of something that's happened on the inside. That we're saying it's no longer me that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And I've experienced in my life that whenever I'm struggling in an area in my life, it's only because most of the time I've turned my back on the Father. And I thought that was awesome what uh, Kelly shared the other day, you know, about the the high chair. You know, there's this place, wow, man, I can't wait for somebody to come to me moaning. Uh, Wow. I'll get the little spoon out and feed you. Praise God. But, you know, a lot of the time we turn our back on what's important. And, and, Going back to what we shared earlier about the Holy Spirit, you know, the Lord wants that intimacy with him. And he wants full control. And he wants us to come under authority. There's a scripture that says that if you submit, and a lot of people miss this bit out, but if you submit yourself to God, the devil will flee from you. Submission is the key. You've got to, to have authority, you've got to come under authority. Praise God. And you know, the Lord puts pastors and leaders in our lives. And you know, and that, they're, not, they're not there to control us or manipulate us. It does happen in church, don't get me wrong. 
but a, a, some, a real pastor and, and leaders that love the flock are there to love them and to cherish them and care for them. And you know, for all of us have got to be in submission to one another and submission to that leadership God's put there. Why? Because there is power in victory and submission. Yes, there is. Yeah. Amen. And there's victory in Christ Jesus. Yes, Amen. Uh, in 1 John it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, yes. even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So I have all that authority. I have that victory in Christ Jesus. Death has no sting. I have victory over situations that come in my life. You know, the only time I ever have problems is when I try to deal with it myself. Oh, that's right. yeah. Man, you know. How many times have I struggled and strived over things, you know, and try to do things in my own flesh and in my own might? It doesn't work. The only time it ever works is when I submit myself to God and give it to Christ. And a lot of the time, if you want to have victory and breakthrough in your life, why don't you just sit down and give it to the Father? Oh, amen. And give it to Him. You know why? Because when Jesus sat down, it was because it was finished. When He was on the cross and He said, It is finished, it is complete. I have won. It is victorious. He did it for me and you. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. We are joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore? It is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. In all this, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Amen. What an awesome God. Amen. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. When I was sitting in the banquet the other weekend, and it was the first session and we were speaking. The Lord was just speaking to my heart. And I sat there and the Lord was speaking to me about David. And I was sitting there thinking, wow, I've got this Sunday message all sewn up. It was just pouring into me. And the Lord was just speaking to me. And then Kelly got up and started sharing some of it. And I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> Praise God. But, you know, I've just been thinking about David and, and the story of David and Goliath. And, and you know, David was uh, a young man that uh, was in a family that wasn't that wealthy because in those times, if you'd got sheep, the servants would tend the sheep and they would look after him. But David was the youngest of eight and so he was tending the sheep. And that was his job. And you know, when Samuel came to Jesse, to God had told him to anoint the, the next person that was going to be God's choice. And, uh, and he came and all the sons came up. You know, Jesse brought seven up and left David in the field. And you know, if there was anybody that probably needed theophostic or counselling after that, it was probably David. Because he probably, you know, how many people, do you, I feel unloved, this has happened to me, I feel unwanted, I, I, you know, I'm insecure. You know, David could have been one of them people. You know, because he was left in the field. He was not even considered to be brought up as the youngest with the other seven. And we know that Samuel came and stood before all the sons and he looked at them. And, uh, and God said to him, don't go from what you see with your eyes. And uh, we know the story that uh, obviously he never picked any of the ones that were handsome, good-looking, strong, looked like they'd be a good king. And then uh, Jesse said, well, there's only my youngest, David, and brought David up. And uh, David was a shepherd. And remember, this is before Christ. But David had got a relationship with God. And uh, it says in the Word that uh, when he was a shepherd, that David had to fend off the lion and the bear and he used to fight them and protect his sheep and if the, if the sheep had been taken he would go and he would slay them and you know and I mean I don't know about you but when I see lions and I see bears they're pretty big <laughs> you know and I'd probably want a gun not a sling and you know and uh, but David went and he protected his sheep and he honoured his father Jesse and he looked after the sheep and he protected them with his own life and David had victory over them battles with them enemies. 
And then we know the story goes on that uh, there's Goliath standing, this big giant standing in front of uh, the armies of Israel. And uh, David comes. And in 1 Samuel 17, it just says, And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to against this Philistine to fight him. An encouraging word. You know, how many times when we come to a battle in our life and we come up to something, to somebody that we probably love dearly, comes up to you and goes, You're not able. <laughs> you're not big enough. You're not strong enough. I don't think you're really in the right place to, uh, to probably conquer that now. Uh, but you see, when you know who you are in Christ, and when you've got that relationship with God, it doesn't matter what people say to you. You know. And, uh, and David knew. And uh, Saul said to him, you are only a youth. Well, look at joy. Wow. Wow. Then words can come out of our young people, powerful. And he and a man of war of his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered him out of the mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him up by his beard and I smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and the uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them seeing as he hath defied the armies of the living God. David was already declaring, already declaring that the battle had been won. He'd already said to Saul, he will become as one of them. He'd already come out of his mouth that he knew that the victory had already been won. And he was telling uh, Saul what was going to happen. And David, moreover, the Lord had delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. So he was telling Saul, it is God that delivered me. So he knows that his strength and his power is in God. He knows it's the Lord that delivered him out of them things. And if the Lord's delivered him out of that, he can deliver him out of this. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. Saul was pretty quick then after them words to go, fair enough. I can stay in my tent. Saul sat down and, uh, and sent David. And Saul armed David with his own armour and put a helmet of brass upon his head and his arm with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armour and said to go, but he wouldn't have it. David wouldn't wear Saul's armour. Why? Because it wasn't his. That's right. David had learnt. See, all our walks, all our walks are different. That's right. And we probably all come through different situations in our life. And we've all come through different experiences. And we've all come through different ways. We have the same Christ, the same living God. But we've come from different paths. Why? Because we've got different callings. And David had proven himself with what God had given him. And his confidence was in God. His confidence was in what God had given him. He was good with a sling, but he was confident that it was the Lord that was going to deliver him. And he didn't want what somebody else had proven or what somebody else had got. He wasn't living off somebody else's victory. He was living off the victories he'd had. And you know, Jesus wants us to live off the victories we've had in him. And you know, I can look back in past things in my life and I can point at victories that have come in my life, whether they be small ones, big ones, whatever they are. But I know that it's God that's brought me through them victories in my life. Not somebody else's. Not Smith Wigglesworth's or, or Catherine Cooman's. This is what's happened in my life. And these are the victories that God's done in my life. So if he's done them victories and I've had past victories in them situations in Christ, then I will do it again. And so David was going, you can keep that. This is mine. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And so David went and stood before Goliath. And we know the story that he took the stones and uh, he got David right, uh, Goliath right between the eyes. And to take the authority away, he slew his head off. That's good. Amen. And you know, many times in our lives, we've got Goliaths in our life, haven't we? And we come and we go, Lord, I really need victory over this area in my life. And Jesus is saying, you've got the victory. Because I have paid the price yeah. for that victory. Yeah. And all you've got to do is believe and trust in me. And I really believe God's saying this morning, just look back at your life, at the victories that I've taken you through. And if I've taken you through those victories and situations in your life, will I not do it again? I can conquer. There's nothing too big for God. There's nothing too big for God. We have victory over sickness, disease. 
We have victory over our life. We have victory over everything that God has given us. Why? Because Jesus won it. And the title, Jesus is our source of victory, he is. He's, He's our everything. He's my everything. Without him, I would be nothing. You know, when, when I uh, went to college to do my apprenticeship, uh, I was never, probably, when I left school, I had a lot of reports that said, Mark could do better if he stopped talking. <laughs> Mark could do better if he paid attention. And, and things like that, you know, I know none of you have. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I hated maths and English. It just bored me stiff. Why, why do you need commas and full stops? It's ridiculous. <laughs> And, uh, but when I went for my test to get into my apprenticeship, you had to do this test, this sheet, and a lot of it included maths and English. And I used to think, why? I'm just banging nails in wood. What's the point? It's not hard. But there was a grade on it, and it was, it was one to three. And whatever score you got in that test would grade if you got the top marks. Then the college would put more time into you to get you a placement in a firm as an apprentice. And then if you got into number two, you would get less time spent and you had to do a little bit more hard work. And if you got number three, you had to do it yourself. That, you know, you was, you was down the chart a bit and, and you probably, well, my maths and English wasn't the best, so I never did brilliant in my test. And, uh, and so I got the third mark. And uh, I had people saying to me, yeah, you, 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 won't, you won't do it because uh, you're probably not academically well enough to do this college course and, and, and things like that. And I remember coming home and, and, and thinking to myself, wow, I just can't. If I just spent a little bit more time at school, I probably could have done that. I remember my dad saying to me, let's pray about it because remember, you've got God on your side. And, and, and forget what they've said, but you've got to play your part. That doesn't mean you sit back and go, well, remember you've got God on your side, so you can just sit back and, and just let, see what happens. And I see a lot of people do that. Well, you know, God's got a job for me. And then just sit at home. <laughs> no, you have to get off your backside. Yeah. So my parents said to me, right, you, we want you to write a hundred letters for interviews and we're going to send them and post them all around the area and see what comes back and so I did it and I wrote these letters and I posted it and, and did my thing through and, uh, and I had three interviews for jobs and every single one I got offered an apprenticeship and I sat back and and then I had the choice of which three to take and because I'd seen God move in that area and give me victory really over my own mind and my own thoughts of what had been said to me, that then I had a choice. And so then I prayed and asked God about the choice, and the Lord made it clear for me the choice that I wanted to go in. And when I got to the college, there was people there that had got the first letter that hadn't got a placement. And I thought, wow, how awesome is my God. And at the age of 16, I would consider that it was probably one of the first little victories I'd had where I saw God move in my life that in all the negative stuff that was said against me that you can't do it we don't think you're clever enough God had other plans but what I'm trying to get to is yes we have victory in Christ Jesus but he does want us to step out into it and he does want us to move in it he doesn't want see as church people, I think church people are worse than anybody, aren't they? With cliches and gimmicks and stuff we say, and it's very easy to let things flow off the tongue when you're not going through something. You know, somebody's struggling, somebody's going through a rough time of their life. Yeah, don't worry, you've got victory in Jesus. You'll be fine. And that person's sitting there and they're going, oh, oh, yeah. But he's having that reality, and it's knowing how to move in that. And Jesus wants us to take hold of that intimate relationship with him. And you know, it was only when my dad said to me, let's pray about this and bring it to God, that really I was inviting the Lord into the situation. So many times in our lives we shut him out. And most people that have ever come for counselling that I know that in church 
And I would say pretty much 100%. And Simon sat with, we both sat together in many a meeting with people is when they've turned their back against the word and gone in completely the opposite direction yeah, to what that says yeah. or God has told them to do something and they've gone against it. And then wonder why they're in problems and they're struggling. The Lord wants us to follow what this word is. He wants us to follow what God is saying. And he wants us to be, and the obedience plays a massive part. You know, uh, David was just sharing to me about Smith Wigglesworth actually at the back. We were just having a bit of conversation. I love talking about men of God like that. But he was saying his intimacy, he's reading a book now, his intimacy with God was so great that all the things that took place, he was only doing in obedience to what the Lord was telling him to do. He didn't go around the church kicking everybody. Absolutely. Because <laughs> if he had, yeah. there'd be some bruised legs. Yeah. But there was times when the Lord told him to kick, and he was, what he was doing really was kicking that demon out of people's lives, yeah. kicking that sickness out. And the Holy Spirit was telling him to do different things that he used to do, was quite radical things. But he was only doing what the Father told him to do. And the Lord wants us just to do. And a lot of it comes down to, what, this is what God says on the matter. I have victory over this situation. Now, be, how big that Goliath is in my life, I can slay it because Jesus has paid the price on the cross. I've got the ultimate victory in him. Amen. I'm a child of the living God. His life is living on the inside of me. And I have a confidence in him. And all that confidence is in him. It's not on my own strength. It's on him. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus, the victor. It's all about him. And he wants me to walk in that, and you know, Sue was just sharing that about the fire, and I really believe God is just saying to us, He's going to take us into a deeper intimacy with Him. He's going to take us deeper into Him, because I really do believe we're going to see some amazing things, and He's going to come out of intimacy with God. Praise Him, Hallelujah. So you know, if you're going through difficult situations in your life. Just stop and stand still. And number one, look. Have I invited? Have I stopped a minute and actually looked at whether actually I brought Jesus into this situation? Have I said to him, Lord, you know, I'm going to stop striving my own strength because I can't do this, but I know that you're more than able in me. And, and I know I have victory in you. And no matter what my circumstance is, I know that I have victory over it in you. And so, Lord, I'm asking you to come in. I'm asking you, Lord, just to, to show me. Perhaps there's areas in your life where you've come to a crossroads and you've got to take direction. Lord, show me what way you want me to step. Show me what way you want me to go. You know, lead me and guide me. But, there's, you know, there's one thing I would say. Whatever the Lord says, it will tie up with this. God will not go against his word. You know, God's word is never out of date. We're living in times of where men of God are being blinded. You know, there was something on there the other day and it just stunned me. Uh, I did laugh because it said former mega church pastor. Former was the key. That was talking about the word that if we keep reading letters that are out of the Bible that are 2,000 years old, the church will become irrelevant in life. And that we should accept gay marriage and, and, and uh, both sexes because that is the generation we're living in now. The key is former pastor. He wasn't there very long by the sounds of it. But you know, but this is what's happening. Eyes are being blinded. People are compromising because they've got no relationship with the Father. They've got no intimacy with Him. And you know, our victory in our lives will come out of intimacy. You know, that's what God's been saying to me a lot these last few days, and I think God wants me to get into it. I think I'm, you know, starting to get the message that victory in Him, relationship in Him, everything is in Him. And, and it's through that. You know, I want to, you know, I hunger to see the signs and the wonders and the miracles. You know, I want to be standing here in this church and watching Mick run around this building. 
praise God. And it's going to happen. And, it, and I believe it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen. Why? Because we have victory in Christ. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> Hallelujah. So are you blessed? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God.